Here. How are you, Keith? Good, John. How you doing? Good, good. Random question for you to start off here, but uh, um, you've got a few guys on your line there that uh, have, uh, have scored a touchdown, perhaps even two in their, in their day. Um, what, from your standpoint, what's that like when one of your big guys scores a touchdown? Um, you know, and, and how unusual is it that you have a, that you do have a few of them on this roster? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's very unusual. And I think, you know, I think the guys love it. Like, you know, the line just, it's a situation that they're very rarely in. So whether they're scoring a touchdown or their buddy, man, they're, they're really fired up. So I don't know that we set out every week trying to figure out a way to get that done, but I know when it happens, they're really excited. Sure. And then a uh, little mainstream follow. Um, uh, Isaiah Wilson, um, you know, had the, had the situation um, that, uh, you know, he was at the, at the party and, and I know Mike said that it was kind of taken care of internally, but, you know, in, in something like that, what, what can you talk to Isaiah about and, and uh, uh, you know, turn that into, uh, I guess, probably kind of a teaching point? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's a great question. And, and it's, you know, just, it, with everything from Isaiah's process, since we finally have been able to get him into the building is, is teaching him how to be a pro. And, you know, I think as we mature from, from high school to college and then college to the NFL, you know, we're, we're, we're going from, you know, um, teenager to, to adult. And I think in that process, you know, Isaiah has to understand that his responsibility to this team goes far beyond, um, you know, just showing up for practice every day. So I think just this, this you know, it, it's been a really weird off season for everybody. And I think, you know, just being a rookie is going to be hard this year for a lot of guys. And, uh, you know, our goal is to get him caught up as fast as possible and to just understand, man, we got a lot of people counting on you and uh, we don't have much time. Coach, I've got one here for you. Uh, yep. Obviously, with the lack of preseason games, uh, you know, it's we're, we're relying more so on generating in practice pressure uh, so the guys can get reacclimated to that. Uh, what are some ways that you are doing that for the O line? Yeah, it's another good question. I think, you know, part of Coach Rabel's process is we just do a ton of, you know, what we call move the ball. And that's where we just call it versus our defense and, and, you know, it's not necessarily scripted. So I think there's a big, that's a big part of it. And, and the other part of it is, you know, we just have to, you know, we, we have to understand what the, what the, the facts are right now. And that is that every practice we have to treat like a game and, uh, you know, that's a whole, you, you know, it's not an, it's nothing new, but it's just, I think, you know, the importance of that, I think, is multiplied in a year like this. We have to wake up every morning and get our minds and our bodies in a, in a spot ready to go play our best football as if it's a game because we're not going to have those, um, those four games to kind of figure out our routine and get us in that, uh, you know, get us in that state of mind. Okay. Uh, when a player is not able to participate physically in practice, uh, can you talk about the importance of that player still zeroing in on getting the mental reps of practice? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's critical. And, and, you know, we try and stress the best we can, you know, about, you know, not just mental reps on the field, but vis visualization, um, even at home. And, uh, you know, when you can't, when you can't get the physical rep, how can you, you know, essentially take a mental rep and trick your body into thinking you did it. And uh, I think that's really important. Um, and, and I think, you know, Raves does a great job, you know, with this, he's always reminding the guys, don't tell us what you can't do, tell us what you can do. And so, um, you know, in those opportunities where we are limited, what, what, what can we do to, to get the most out of our time? And that's definitely a big part of it. And one last here, one for you. Uh, Nate Davis 
has said that he feels much more comfortable this training camp uh, compared to last year. He said he's able to focus more on the little things and the little nuances this year. Um, do you see that increased confidence in him this year? Yeah, there's there's no question. And uh, I think, you know, we, we haven't played a game yet in the 2020 season, but from what Nate has done up to this point, you know, I think we're all really proud of him. Um, you know, he, he, that transition from college to NFL, that was a, um, you know, a big jump in, in the sense of, you know, just how do you get your body right every week and the, and the speed and the violence of the game and um, the, the mental preparation is, is a different level, obviously, um, you know, just make, you know, the transitioning from college and, you know, it was a whirlwind for him last year. And I give him a lot of credit. He just came out and did the best he could. And and, uh, and this year now, just like he's saying, I think he has such a better understanding. He can really, instead of surviving, he can figure out how to, you know, thrive and, and make make things better and, and correct his issues and, um, you know, really become a, a pro who understands what he has to do. And if it doesn't happen, how he can fix it on his own. And then just one here on Ben Jones. Uh, he's been the anchor of the O-line uh, pretty much since he's arrived in Tennessee. And uh, he's definitely a valuable leader in the locker room. Um, can you talk about just maybe the presence he has over young guys uh, in their game, like Nate Davis or Isaiah? Yeah, I think, you know, Ben has that unique ability that he, he not only leads by example, he he is, you know, everybody likes him and he likes everybody. You know, I think if you ask him, there's not many people he would, he, he would, you know, he would tell you that he actually doesn't like. And so here's a guy that that works his butt off and he's what we call the ultimate pro, meaning, you know, in terms of just his study habits you know, how he takes care of his body and, and, and getting rehab or treatment or cold tubs or whatever that is to just go out to work every day and give it your best. And so, you know, his, his, he, he's one of those leaders that not only does it right, but people like, and, the, and they're willing to listen to because they genuinely like him and his personality. So he, that's a, you know, he's a, he's an important piece to that leadership puzzle for these young guys. And, uh, you know, we're always trying to point them in that direction. Like, Hey, just, you know, just look and watch what he does. And he's been in this league a long time. And it's, you know, what's really impressive about Ben is in his entire career, I don't know what it is. He, he, I, he's barely missed a game in however many years he's been starting in this league. I mean, his longevity and, and, uh, ability to stay healthy because of his process is incredible. 